Hey guys, it's Paradise, and this is a big switch up after all of our Monster Hunter content, but you've probably seen us talking about this game for the last couple months in our podcast, and so here's our first video on Delta Force, which we're confident to talk about now after sinking in over 260 hours to extensively get to grips with the game's various modes, and particularly its extraction mode, called Hazard Operations. We've got a lot to talk about and unpack here for this free to play game. But to quickly clarify, although we've played over 260 hours, it was in the game's alpha, which included the Hazard Warfare, its large scale PVP mode, and Hazard Operations extraction mode. So while the game is expected to be free to play with a cash shop and have a single player campaign, those two aspects were not present in the alpha. We are expecting there will be a battle pass and cosmetic microtransactions like skins, and they've said there will be no pay to win, so we'll have to wait and see. But you're likely wondering, what is Delta Force and what can you expect from it? Well, Delta Force is actually a tactical military first person shooter franchise dating back to 1998. This new Delta Force title is a reboot of the tactical shooter's legacy that aims to bring back the hardcore tactical military combat that made that original of the series a classic, but with modern takes like the new Extraction Mode, which we've seen have a lot of popularities in other games like Escape from Tarkov and recently Grey Zone Warfare. This reboot is being developed and published by Timmy Studio Group and Team Jade, which is a branch of Timmy Studios, with it aiming to capture the intensity of the original games while updating them with modern graphics and gameplay. Interestingly, as Timmy Studio Group are involved, you can also expect the game to come out not just on PC, but consoles and even mobiles. But believe me when I say this game is extremely polished. It is surprising just how well crafted they have made this game. It's easily more polished than recent Battlefield and Call of Duty titles on release, and again we were playing an alpha. Graphically the game looks great on PC, and the mouse and keyboard controls felt incredibly smooth. I think FPS players will feel at home with its strong gunplay, movement, and time to kill which does change depending on your mode, ammo, and enemy's armor. Without having much experience in Timmy Studio titles, we are surprised at the quality of their AAA games. This makes us really excited for the Monster Hunter game that they're developing, which is still largely unknown, but the pure polish of Delta Force has our hopes high. One of the things we loved about the game is its great deal of customization across all aspects of your loadout, from your weapon to your gear and operator. Weapons have a ton of attachments that directly impact the stats of your gun, decreasing vertical or horizontal recoil, increasing range, damage, hip fire spread, the noise of your shots, and more. It's a very well fleshed out system with a lot to play around with, and it's easily one of the highlights of the game for us with a lot of weapon and attachment choice. The game itself across all of the modes has a strong focus on tactical and squad based warfare. For the large scale PvP mode Havoc Warfare, think of battlefield style matches with capture points, tickets, vehicles, and even squad points to call in airstrikes and other perks. So gameplay with both your squad and your larger team is going to be needed to control the map and win that victory. Meanwhile for the Hazard Operations Extraction Mode, there's multiple different 3 player squads that load into a map and there's many maps available, they're full of loot, NPC enemies and contracts to complete, where the goal is to get as much valuables as possible before extracting in one of several exit points in the map, with some activating after a timer, some by pulling a lever somewhere, or by earning currency in the match and then spending it to exit. As we mostly played and enjoyed this extraction mode, let's talk about the things we liked from it. Firstly is the map variety. We didn't have access to all of them in the alpha, but there was several and the flow of them was very well executed. As you progressed and extracted more, you would build up currency, which could then be invested into a stronger loadout. This then meant you could load into higher tier maps or higher difficulties, which have a higher required gear value to enter, and because of this have much better and rarer loot to find. But it also means the other players on the map will have that better and higher gear, meaning they have stronger ammo and armor, so there's a higher risk but a much higher reward. Interestingly, the ammo and armor system have a straightforward way of functioning. You see, the ammo will effectively pierce its own and lower rarity of armor. 
For example, if you have purple rarity ammo, you'll easily penetrate purple armor or lower. But if the enemy has orange or red armor, which is a higher tier, you will need a lot more shots to take them down. This applies to most of the ammo types, but some do focus on flesh damage and some are more focused on armor penetration. This does make for an interesting economy where higher rarity armor and ammo is very expensive but more valuable. That being said, it does make the lower tiers of ammo less competitive in the harder modes, where pretty much everyone is running purple or higher armor, so some tweaking might be needed in how they function. To touch on weapon customization though, in the extraction mode, it's super engaging to play around with. The best attachments are of course very expensive. Meanwhile, lower or mid tier attachments are dramatically less, but do have slightly lower stats because of it. This means creating a budget or middle tier loadout is significantly cheaper than going all out on the expensive stuff. But of course it means you'll have slightly lower stats because of it, so you have an interesting choice in if you want to spend all of your money on one gun, or significantly less to help reduce the costs. But remember, if you die you lose all of it anyway. That is except for items in your lockbox, which does have different rarities that increase the size of it as you go higher, although the way these different lockboxes were unlocked wasn't available to us. For the actual gameplay of the extraction mode, it was extremely well done. The maps are designed very well, making engagements intense and different each time. From long-ranged open fights to indoor CQB, the game really captures the intensity of an extraction shooter very well. In particular, the gunplay and audio cues of the footsteps and shots may have even been slightly overtuned. But honestly, this was a nice contrast from other games like Call of Duty, where it's highly undertuned. But let's talk about the operators for a second, as this is a big part of the game. There's different operator classes, which are more like pre-made characters, where you can't really change their appearance outside of skins. They do however act as the classes in the game. Each one has a passive, an active skill, and an ultimate. From characters that can simply throw grenades, to manual tracking rocket launchers, and even arrows that can ping enemies through walls, the variety is nice but in the extraction mode, there was no doubt that some of these were more useful or perhaps better than others to have in your squad. And in the alpha it was no secret that players loved to run the arrow operator for her tracking arrow that was extremely strong because it would give your team a way to clear an area without risking yourself or straight up see an enemy team through walls if you shot it over them. So the operators were cool but perhaps could do with a little bit of balancing. But once you got going, learnt the different maps, where to loot, where you're likely to encounter players, how to juggle which loot is worth taking over others, everything clicks into place. As you build up money, you start running stronger loadouts and you can feel that increase in power in those PvP encounters, and you can start spending excess money on upgrading your black site, which is like your base of operations, where you can upgrade it to gain small but impactful stat bonuses like more carry weight, unlocking additional crafting options, and more stash space, which is very much needed as you start hoarding loot like the goblin you are. The only major issue I found, specifically in the extraction mode, was the cheaters and what the cash shop might look like. In the alpha, cheaters did feel a bit more common than I would like, and the devs have acknowledged it and say they're taking steps to combat this, but this could make or break the game once it goes public as it is a free to play title. And with that in mind, depending on how they tackle the cash shop, it could also make or break the game. They have said you cannot pay to win, so hopefully there will be no way to actually buy power. But with these two concerns to the side, the overall experience and takeaway from everything altogether was actually that the game is extremely fun. It left me with that feeling of wanting to jump back in, to do just one more run at the end of the day, and the feeling of finding an extremely rare item was just so good. I also loved how some of these rare items couldn't just be shoved into your lockbox. This means you get those moments of tension where you hit the jackpot, but now have to extract with millions worth of loot on you, as you can slowly hear enemy shots or footsteps nearby, or get into a straight up PvP squad fight, knowing that your death means losing like 5 whole runs worth of high tier loot because you lucked out on that item. So Delta Force is a game that got us hooked and I can't wait to see how the full release will pan out. If they can implement a graceful cash shop, 
balance the operators a little bit more, and effectively combat cheating, this game could be a staple for the FPS and extraction community. But if they fall short on these points, well we've seen before what can happen with previous titles trying to break into this space that didn't quite hit those marks. So hopefully you enjoyed this rundown after we put so many hours into this game and honestly had a lot of fun doing so. So drop a like if we've helped you out and subscribe for more videos on your favourite games coming very, very soon.